have uh, made it to Edinburgh Airport. It's quarter past eight in the morning. We set off at five in the morning. I board in about an hour, and now we're just kind of getting something to eat. So the flight was fine, the flight was okay, but uh, I knew there was supposed to be scammers here. The minute I stepped out of the airport, well literally the second, I took two steps. And this guy was trying to get me into a taxi. And then within the minute there was about 10 police officers around me and this guy because telling me not to go with him and they had to he had to go with the police because he was a black tack black cat or something and he's not allowed to do that um, but I asked him how much it would cost and he said 300 yuan which is around I don't know 30 pounds from the airport to the middle to the city centre and so but they pointed me in the way of proper taxis so I went to the where they told me to go and uh, he said yeah he can take me there so uh, I got in one of the proper taxis and it took me to the, an ATM first and then to the city centre this was at like half three in the morning when I landed so we finally get there and he asks for 600 yuan which is about 60, 65 pounds and I'm like no way <laughs> I didn't want to pay more than like 200 really. But I said, okay, well, what about 400? And he goes, oh yeah, okay. And you can see he's like chuffed with himself because that's way too much. Even when I asked people here, they were like, yeah, it's about 120. Like, that's what it should be. So I ended up getting scammed anyway, even more so than if I took the black cab. So then I had to find my hostel and it's pitch black, it's like five in the morning and it, it's down this alley and it looks so like sketchy. I go down and there's just all these street cleaners just like mopping up and like spitting everywhere and it wasn't a good experience and it's freezing. I don't know what the temperature was, it's probably in the minus. And I'm going up and down looking for this hostel and I can't find it for the life of me. And I'm messaging my family, asking them, because my I've got a VPN, which was supposed to allow me to use Google Maps and everything um, on Google, but that didn't work, so I couldn't even access maps or any kind of internet to let me know where I was going. My family was trying to direct me in the way of it, um, and I eventually found it. I was freezing. I got in at about, I don't even know, 6 a.m., maybe and I wouldn't be allowed to have my room until 12, 1 p.m. which was just far too late. I was really tired after the flight. Um, so after waiting until like nine, I decided I'm just gonna get a private room for one night just to sleep in. <laughs> and then I did. And then the next day I woke up in the alley, just looked really nice. <laughs> it was scary the night. But then, the next day, during daylight, you know, there's people walking up and down, all doing, you know, all sorts of people just walking up and down. The first 24 hours was really tough, but I made it. I took a small walk today, because Google Maps isn't working, so I can, so I've kind of got to navigate my way around, and it's really nice. I'll show you a couple of videos. 
that was my first day in Beijing. So I've arrived in Beijing. I'm here, I found my hostel. I've had a nightmare of 24 hours. This place was like terrifying on the night, but it's really nice during the day. So I'm just going to find an ATM and then get something to eat, probably something quite easy. Because yeah, I'm still feeling a bit rough, but yeah, no real internet access, so all this is going to be really late. But I'll still try and take some footage. The driving is terrible. There's people beeping all the time. Uh, people just driving wherever they want, really. Little bikes and tuk-tuks, just, just everywhere, even on the paths. quickly to get something to eat and then I'm gonna hit Tiananmen Square and the Forbidden City. I'm up nice and early so I'm gonna try and do quite a lot today and uh, show you uh, what I see. Okay, I don't really know what I ordered. It said something about fruit pancake. But this is what I got. Also there are only chopsticks on the table which is, I don't know how I'm supposed to eat this with chopsticks. So, what that was, but it wasn't very nice. It said fruit, but there's no fruit in it. There was a sausage, it was like some kind of crisps. Um, yeah. It wasn't very good. <laughs> That's where you would be, Dad. The China Railway Museum. All the way to the Forbidden City. Got told I needed my passport, which I didn't have. Walked all the way back to the hostel, then walked all the way back here. I didn't even need my passport after all. But this is like amazing. Like. you're wondering how cold it is in China, this is completely frozen. <laughs> this is like, this place is absolutely huge. Like, this is just like the end, this is not even the entrance. This is the entrance of the entrance. I've got a little tour guide. What do you think? I think it could really come in, come into fashion to be honest. I think these are the new beats. Pretty good. has a million rooms and then a million seats in those rooms and then it just has like banquets in every room it's like oh yeah but this one's got a slight difference but this one's got a slight difference but they're all like pretty much the same he just wants lots of different rooms to do slightly different things it's crazy 
And the seats are pretty much the same, they're all like golden seats. They've got to be gold. It's crazy. I just tried to get scammed, like worked. Basically, I exited the forbidden uh, city. Basically, these two people started talking to me <laughs> about, oh, I'm trying to work on my English, let's talk for a bit. We left, they were like, oh, let's get something to drink. They took me to this very quiet place, and then I think they just wanted me to buy something from that place. I think they clearly worked for the, wherever that was, and the prices were, like they weren't crazy, but they were too expensive for me. And, oh my word, it's, it's just so ridiculous. Here's why I think, here's more reasons why I think it was a scam. It was in a quiet place. They seemed to know exactly where they were going and there was only like one table it just didn't seem right so yeah 